Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for joining the session today. Uh, my name is Andreas Huber, and I lead the team at First Use Size Up as CEO, and I'm with our Chief Operating Officer and Head of Product, Rami El Chafani. What this session today is really all about is the power of civic data when applied to emergency response, how we together can affect better incident outcomes. And that's exactly what we're going to show you in our live solution demo in just a minute. But before we jump in, I wanted to share a quick story about our solution and kind of what we're all about and how we got started. It was roughly six years ago that we started on the fire prevention side, working with fire marshals and code enforcement. And during a structure fire, one of the local firefighters had actually fallen through the first floor into the basement and was fatally injured. And it was because a trust system supporting that floor had given out. And what was happening in Albany, some state legislation in New York was being passed requiring local municipalities, really the building departments, to alert or notify their respective fire chiefs when these types of construction considerations existed, but without a real sort of effective plan. And it was at that point that we realized, gee, there's just, there's just gotta be a better way. So it was really then that we shifted our focus towards a new mission, which is to end first responder injuries due to a lack of information. I think we can all agree that in today's day and age of technology, it's completely unacceptable for men and women in the field running into buildings, being injured or worse, when information that could have helped make better decisions was out there and exists in different data sets. And so that's what we're focused on solving this problem. Because it's, it's a large problem, it affects or causes thousands of injuries and deaths each year nationwide. While billions of dollars are spent on the traditional manual approach, to collecting, maintaining, and distributing data. What we found is that there's three core drivers of the problem. The first is a limited access to data. Simply put, emergency personnel are not getting all the critical data they need when responding. The second point is that any information that is collected is done so manually. It's time consuming, it's expensive, and often outdated. It's done through physical inspections of buildings, and only on commercial. When you look at residential buildings, you're still left with nothing more to go on when you're dispatched other than the type of incident and the location. Even when we have good up-to-date information on some of those commercial buildings, it's not in the quick and easy to consume format. It's sitting behind tabs inside the records management system or the dispatch system and in the form of text or blocks of text and more often than not gets, gets ignored completely. Not an effective solution to the problem. So what, what would be a solution to this problem? How would we attack this if we were to try to solve it in today's day and age of technology, right? We would, we would programmatically or automatically go out and collect information that's publicly available through online data sources. And we would connect into those offline data sources as well. We'd bring it in to one central location and then we would translate it into a format that is quick and easy to consume in the field. And we would distribute it to emergency personnel before they arrive on scene. And we would, the data would be on all buildings, not just commercial, but residential included. And it would be done in a way that's 100% integrated with the public safety agency's dispatch process, their dispatch software, and personalized to the uniqueness of their operation. And that's exactly what First Do Size Up does. We connect into these various different data sources, your city assessor or billing department. Uh, Google, Office of Fire Prevention, some of these great valuable civic data sets are your tests and inspections, your property information, complaints and violations, permits, right? All that data, when it's brought into one central cloud-based location, can then be translated from property <coughs> codes and permit codes and inspection details and fails and passes into a format that is quick and easy to consume, a very simple front end that literally emergency personnel bouncing around in a truck can simply glance at the screen to get an understanding of what they're getting into when they arrive on scene. And so this is what we're excited to show you now in a live solution demo, and I'll pass it to Rami. All right. Thank you, Andreas. Second. All right. I'm excited. So like Andreas mentioned, there's just a wealth of data that's sitting in uh, you know, different formats. Companies like Socrata, making that data relatable or related, uh, making that data structured in a format that makes sense and open and available 
really changes the game in terms of how companies like First Two Size of another organization can come build translation layers on top of that data and make it uh, contextual, uh, especially when it comes to things like emergency response, where visualizing that data in, in the format in permits, inspections, test violations, uh, uh, complaints violations, and just never going to be feasible in the couple of minutes you have to respond. But that's exactly what we do. So imagine city of San Francisco, uh, you're responding to a residential structure fire. Um, in the past, even city of San Fran, even FDNY, across uh, the board, across the country, they would have incident type and they would have location. And that's the type of information they'd respond to. Maybe the weather because they're on the way and they can see what the weather is. Um, but with first two size up and companies who are building on top of the great types of Socrata data and other data that's out there, this is what they see. They see a uh, size up narrative, alert icons and alert tiles on a residential structure, and the translation of different types of street view, roof image, property sketch, assessor, in one screen where you could literally just glance at, fully integrated with the dispatch process. So there's really three forms of translation that we're talking about. One is the size up narrative. So when you look at this size up narrative, it's dynamically generated based on assessor record information, based on permit, test inspection information, based on the alert tiles themselves. This can be sent as a text message to the uh, members, chiefs, whoever. It can be sent as an email. It can be read off of the truck. You can even press this play button and it will be read off to you. So if the chief is responding by himself, he'll press play and it'll be, that size up narrative will be read off to him. Completely configured to the fire department and we'll show you that configurator in a second. These alert tiles, in the exact same way, are dynamically generated based on the underlying data, based on logic, right? That again, through a configurator, tell me whether or not the word vacant appears in a complaint or violation uh, within the last six months. Show me that icon. If that, uh, uh, if the query, if the logic driving that query goes away, then that icon won't show. So now they're responding to an incident and they know that it's possibly vacant. They know that there's trust construction. They know that there's a basement uh, downstairs. They know there's potentially unsafe considerations. And if I want to get more detail, I just tap the icon and it takes me down to the detail, right? With all the information that we know may be important upon further investigation. And I tap to get back up to the top. So what we're doing, again, is visualizing that data in a format that makes sense. So we're mining it on the fly. So all the things that you would expect people to do if they had 20, 30 minutes to analyze information and come up with a safer decision, we're trying to automate that. Also have building footprints, county assessor uh, photos and sketches, uh, street view, access, so sort of all in one place. But the, I guess the real point to get across is this is a residential structure. This, everything you're seeing on the screen here, they would, they would have had uh, you know, absolutely none of that information responding to an incident, and now they do because of companies like Socrata bringing that data and making it accessible online and because of organizations like First Two Size Up translating that information and making it accessible on every, every device. Just, because, just like it's a, because it's a website, it's accessible on every single device, you have access on every single device and you can interact with the data again on every single device. Let me just jump into, so what, what if there's other bits of information that's sitting in other data sources, maybe offline records management systems. What if there's data that the fire department has to collect themselves? Well, we can bring in that information, things like uh, uh, geospatial fire specific information, like where's my fire department connection, where's my uh, fire alarm control panel, and what's the associated code with that control panel. That can be brought in if it's on Socrata, amazing, because that's just one platform that we can, again, it's just more information that you can bring up onto the Socrata platform makes it more valuable because we can bring that information and translate it. But we also provide an inspection tool. So they can drag and drop uh, onto a map and as soon as it's on the map in inspection, it flows straight through to the size up. I'm just going to collapse this and have a look at some of the other bits of important information from a commercial perspective. Uh, Google Place information, Twitter information. So as an example, if we had uh, an accident within five miles. I can mine social media information on the fly, detach uh, for larger incidents where I have the benefit of a larger screen, I can build a screen out. Um, we have, like we said, Google Place information, tell us 
who's there, uh, what the opening hours are, and contact information. But then when we sort of delve down into uh, the icons, we have violation information, which can be incredibly valuable. And when I tap, go down to the detail, I see that number one, this is open. Uh, it's, viol it's a violation that's gonna impact how I respond to the incident. The second that status moves to closed, based on the fact that we've connected the, the data sources, that tile will disappear. So that information won't really drive uh, uh, consideration when responding. Habit has this material coming from fire prevention. If we connect the UN number, we can give them how to respond to that specific chemical on the fly. Again, all in one place. And we're, all we're really doing here is tapping. Right? We're tapping icons. Uh, within one to two minutes, they understand how to respond to this incident based on all this information that's coming from all these great data sources. Um, and finally, what if you want it in a different format? Right? So we provide uh, PDF versions, rip and run sheets. Right? Email it out to them. Rip it off the printer. Again, just translating it into format that makes sense but the underlying valuable information comes from building department, comes from the county assessor. And it's, in, it's data information that you, you know, we speak to municipalities, we speak to the fire chief, they never in a million years thought it was valuable information until they see how it's represented on a screen in a really fast format integrated with dispatch. When we talk about that translation, let's have a look at how that actually works. So here are some examples of the size of narrative. So all we're doing, when I tap this edit button, it's going to bring up how the configurator, how this is actually constructed and created, right? So there's no coding associated with this. Uh, someone probably in IT or even uh, firefighters can configure this themselves based on their own standard operating procedures. But it's literally just saying, hey, based on whatever data field that we're pulling from these different data sources uh, with descriptive text, tell me a story. That fits in with how we respond, how we want to be spoken to when we have one to two minutes to understand what's going on. And the exact same thing with the alert tiles. Uh, each of these alert tiles has fundamental queries associated with them. So when we uh, edit any of these uh, potential queries, we can add more. So construction class equals reinforced concrete. If I added a rule and said, and I want to make sure the lot depth is this amount and save, again, straight through the configurator. So what it's doing is it's fundamentally looking at the, uh, the type of information, the type of data that's there, and doing everything that a person would do if they had 20 to 30 minutes to respond. Right? The application is doing that for you. So just to sort of summarize, you know, there's, it's great being at this conference. It's great speaking to some of the, uh, just everyone has that same mentality around when you start to make data open and you start to relate different data sets to each other and standard, uh, standardize them, normalize that data, it just becomes so valuable because people notice the value of that and start to build applications on top of that data. Cool, that's great. All right, well thank you. Uh, now we'll just open it up for questions. Yes, we have active customers uh, from small uh, volunteer departments up to some of your larger metro departments, uh, both sides of the country. The full of location? Absolutely. Yep. The, the, yep, sorry. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so you're talking about uh, pulling uh, the data that's in the application out rather than in? Other things that you provide into a window inside, <laughs> say, their mobile application. Yeah, that's an awesome point. Because it's just a website, the way we integrate um, with a CAD is just a button that points to a single URL. Uh, for example, with TriTech, um, uh, their mobile responding unit, it's just a button. You tap it, opens up a browser just like any other browser within their application, they close it and it goes away. And it takes them straight uh, to the address because we're receiving the address. Um, all of that's like two to five minutes worth of configuration. You might have mentioned this and maybe I just missed it, but um, you mentioned you know both online and offline data sources. What are some of the offline data sources? Sometimes you'll have uh, building management systems. So we started out in uh, Long Island 
um, New York State, uh, and within Nassau County, they have two, two, three large building departments. Uh, they do not publish their data online. The county assessor is online, but they have building management systems that we just connect to. So uh, we bring permit inspection information through, and it's as simple as just uh, automated file transfer yep. into our system. And other, other examples might be like a record management system. Uh, while there's so much, there's a big movement towards open data and more and more sharing across agencies through platforms like Socrata, there are still many, many that don't. And we, knowing that, needed to be able to be flexible and still support those customers as well. Um, and so do you have like, are you actually using any straight up like print documents and digitizing? We're, we're not doing um, any OCR type yeah, print to digitize. Yeah, that's a... That's a very different and very fun business. But we do offer, but we do offer a light inspection and manu the, a pre-planning app application to collect data in the field and have it flow through automatically for those departments that are using pen and paper. Yeah. Um, when you said you worked with multiple, like small versus large jurisdictions, have you any problems with actually getting the address fields or lat longs to kind of line up? Because we've gone through this exercise for a couple different times, and even when it's geocoded, uh, some systems geocode things differently slightly, so they don't always line up on the same house. Yep. Yeah. You take that one. A addresses are a fun thing. Um, so yeah, a big part of the onboarding process for us is um, getting what we call a, a, a place table finalized, which is like your your parcel combined with the address combined with the lat long. Um, there are parts where we can just use something like Google to geocode, and there's other times when you have to have the centroid of the polygon. But a big part of what we do is analyzing that place table. Even the city of San Francisco was the same. So you, you have to you have to go through and there's addresses that are missing a parcel, parcel missing an address, same parcel for multiple addresses in different areas. There's all that fun stuff that you have to manage. So we do um, sort of programmatic cleaning of the data um, as we bring it in. So you don't necessarily leverage Socrata. Socrata is just another data source for you? In other words, the product can stand by, alone by itself without Socrata. Yes, exactly right. Um, but but uh, Socrata makes it really easy, so that's why we love yeah. seeing uh, Socrata. It, I mean, because we already have the connections there, uh, and we can pull the data in really quickly. Yeah. Are there is there any information that's integrated um, or any projects that have been considered to look at um, uh, histories of uh, mental health? Um, calls uh, so that you know first responders are prepared that they would be able to see if there was a there had been an incident of a mental health um, occurrence at a household in a prior time. There, there are um, there are some data sets that are related to people at those properties that are related to those properties, and um, there are cases where those uh, data sets will be managed offline by those departments, and they can bring that information into the system as well. Yeah, an, an example of that is uh, in Kitsap County, they have this concept of uh, adult family home conversion, which is residential buildings that have been converted to aged care facilities. Um, and there's, there's not a ton of regulation, and you just don't know when you're responding to an aged care facility, you think you're responding to a residential structure because everyone's told you it's residential. And then they get there, and then they have you know, a, a 10 bed aged age care facility that they have to respond to. So when we realized that that data was actually sitting in permits, at the billing department in a permit type or in a description which said adult family home conversion, we just created an icon that then mined that data and then presented that icon. So all of a sudden now they know they're responding to you know, an aged care facility. Right. If there's a permit or sometimes, uh, and what we realize in Washington State is they actually have a, a, a data set that will say, uh, here are all of the um, um, daycare facilities, aged care facilities, mental health facilities. You can do a search and do a download. So that just becomes another data source. And once those um, tiles are configured, that'll be live across the entire territory uh, for the entire territory of the data set. Have you been operating long enough to look at the impact the use of your tool has had on um, injuries or adverse you know, occurrences among these first responders? 
Yeah, the short answer is yes. We've been in, we've gone to market uh, April of last year, so coming up on a year of, of going to market. But in just, we have some occurrences where uh, chiefs will tell us in just the first two weeks of using the solution, they were able to avoid injuries. Um, arriving at a new construction site where there's a big, as an example, simple information like is there a pool there? A new construction with a big hole that wasn't properly set up from a safety perspective. We're responding at night, it wasn't lit up. And the guys knew, hey, let's pay attention to this because there was an issued permit, as a quick example. Well, if, that, if there are no more questions, thank you everyone for joining. Oh, one yeah. more? Sorry. So it's, um, it's terminology within the industry. Uh, so to size up a location is much like what it sounds. And there is sort of a best practice of information to gather, but it's done so at the scene. Um, and first due is the first responding unit or officer that is re responsible for that. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.